Kia ora. This is Christina Höpner from the Mahara Project at Catalyst IT. And today I would like to give you a preview of the privacy changes that we have planned to release with Mahara 1804 at the beginning of April. These privacy changes um, are necessary because on the 25th of May 2018, a new privacy law will come into effect in the European Union, the GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation. And in order to support institutions in the EU um, that need to comply with this regulation, we are going to make some changes. The EU regulation regulates the privacy of EU residents. So even if a site is not hosted in the EU, but caters to EU residents, um, it needs to comply with the regulation. Since the Mahara project cannot get, give any legal advice, we um, encourage you to check with your lawyers if your organization or institution hosting Mahara is required to comply with this uh, regulation. Today, um, I want to show you the changes that we have made and not go into any more of the um, requirements and other changes that you might need to put into your terms and conditions and privacy statement, but really to um, take you to take you through um, the enhancements that you can expect in the April 2018 release. Since we have not yet finalized this release, seeing that it is um, only the end of February, um, there might still be some changes, um, but they should not be major. So all the functionality that we are um, planning on putting into Mahara for the initial GDPR phase are already in the source code. So you can also already try them out. So there might be some slight text changes on the screens, but the overall functionality should be as um, you will see in today's screencast. So take a seat and um, take a look. So here I have a standard Mahara instance. Um, I did make an upgrade from Mahara 17.10 to this um, Mahara 1804 pre-release currently still on master in order to show you also what happens when, uh, when the site is upgraded and not just freshly installed. My site contains two institutions of which one has its own privacy statement and also its own terms and conditions. Right now I'm logged in as site administrator. And when site administrators are logged in, in particular the, the one that logs in first, um, they don't have to um, accept a privacy statement um, because they would have written the site one. Since not everybody will need to comply with this EU law, um, we made the um, compliance um, op the optional. Um, that means if you need to comply with the GDPR, you need to turn on strict privacy mode. And as site administrator, you can do so under the administration menu, configure site and then site options and then going to the institution settings. You can only turn on strict privacy at the moment um, if you don't allow multiple institutions. That is simply due to the fact that institutions can have their own privacy statements. And um, for this initial development phase, we can only have um, people accept one institution privacy statement instead of two. Um, therefore, if you currently have multiple institutions turned on, you would need to deal with that first and have accounts only in one institution. And then you can turn on pri uh, strict privacy. Another feature that you can turn on because under the GDPR, it um, is now possible or it should be possible that um, people's accounts can be forgotten so that all their personal data is erased. Um, but in some cases, an institution may need to retain certain data 
for example, if it is part of assessments. And therefore, you also have the possibility to review accounts before deletion. You can turn that on either on the site level right here or for each institution individually. And this um, allows institution administrators to um, receive a notification when a learner wants to um, delete their account in order to make an assessment whether they still need certain data from the student that they need to keep for compliance reasons or whether the account can be deleted. So right now I'm turning this um, functionality on for the entire site and um, we can continue. So now that strict privacy is turned on, anybody logging into the site would need to accept the terms and conditions that are set out on the site and then if an institution also set up terms and conditions and privacy statements for its own institution then these would need to be accepted as well. So the next step would be to review those terms and conditions and privacy statements. First, still being logged in a site administrator, this needs to be done in the site administration area and we've separated out the terms and conditions and privacy statement from the static pages into legal to make it to make them easier accessible and you can see that the because i had an upgraded mahara site the privacy statement and the terms and conditions that were on my previous site before have been transferred into this um, new page one little side note, if you happened to link to a privacy statement or terms and conditions on your institution's website, for example, this is not possible anymore because people will need to accept terms and conditions and the privacy statement directly within Mahara. So if you still want to do that, you would need to change the text in here or in your institution privacy statement, for example, and put a link there so that people can still accept it um, but aren't led to an external site first. So any of those links would have been removed and you would need to put in your own information. So now here you have the privacy statement and the default one um, that was already on my site is in here and now I can edit that. Because the GDPR requires that we keep track or that you as institution keep track of the version, um, you will need to provide a version number in here. That can be any characters. Um, it does not have to be a number, but it needs to be less than, uh, yeah, it needs to be up to 15 characters only um, to make it a short one. So since my version was 1.0, I now can um, give it just 1.1. And then I can make changes to my privacy statement. And save that version. Please take note that any changes that you make to either the privacy statement or terms and conditions and be that only um, be that only um, spelling mistakes will require that people need to accept this statement again once you have saved it and turned on pri uh, strict privacy. Um, at the moment we do not have a draft status or th something like that so that you can prepare your document. Any changes you make are saved immediately and trigger a new consent form. Therefore ideally please have your statements written up before, corrected, proofread, and checked by your legal team before you actually put them onto Mahara in order to avoid multiple, um, multiple triggers for the consent. So now on this table you see that version 1.0 is there and version 1.1. You can view the old version and you can then also always edit the most current version in order to trigger a new version. And the same goes for the terms and conditions. I can edit my terms and conditions um, 
give it a new version number. And then save that. And again, immediately I'm up on saving the form. Um, people who log in after the saving will be required to accept um, that statement again. Now, since I also have um, an institution on my site, I can do the same thing for an institution. So the legal statements aren't anymore under the static pages, but under their own um, navigation point legal. And here I have the school institution privacy statement and then also the terms and conditions that I can change. And if you have multiple institutions, then you have that here as well. And in this case, I had already made changes to the default one for the university and can make changes again if you, I like. So these are the administrative um, statements that I can change. And I always have the creation date shown as well so that I keep a track record of when um, things have been written out and um, changed. Now, if I want to log in as a learner, I can then accept the statements. So let me just masquerade as a learner um, to make this a quick process. So I go to my user search and then login as user. Now, when you log in, uh, when you masquerade as another user, in some cases, especially if that person hasn't been online yet, um, you may not want to accept the privacy statement and terms and conditions on their behalf because you're the administrator. So you can log in anyway and just check if they have all the templates they need or if um, everything is set up correctly. Um, so that when this user logs in, they actually still have the chance to review the privacy statements. And now once somebody logs in, they need to accept the privacy statements before they can actually enter their account. And so they would see the site privacy statement, the site terms and conditions, the institution privacy statement, and also the institution terms and conditions. And they all have the updated date so that it is clear to the learner when that um, document was created. And for each of these statements, they will need to give their consent. So let's just give consent for one and not the others. And that triggers the uh, model where they can say why they refuse to accept any of the other privacy statements in terms and conditions, which triggers an email to the institution administrator so that the institution administrator and this learner can talk about um, the, the discrepancies of why the learner doesn't want to accept and therefore can come to an understanding. At the moment, it is an all or nothing acceptance. Um, it is not possible for a learner to opt out out of um, part of the privacy or part of the terms and conditions. They need to accept them all. Of course, only after they have fully read the information. So if we do that now for this particular student, and go save changes, we can enter the account. Now, it is also important for the GDPR that um, the that people who accepted the privacy statement and also the terms and conditions can review those and also revoke them at any point in time. And therefore, we also implemented that learners can see 
those statements in their account settings. So if you click on the user menu and then go to settings and legal, you can see the site privacy statement, site terms and conditions, institution privacy statement, and institution terms and conditions. And in this and in on this page, you also see that you consented to it and also the time and date when you consented to this agreement. If at some point in time you do refuse, then you can change the switch and trigger the refusal model again in order to explain why you're refusing the account and therefore can get in touch with the institution administrator. Otherwise, if you don't, um, you can continue with your account. If you do refuse one of those statements, um, your account will automatically be suspended so that you can not enter it um, because you said you're not using the account anymore. And then depending on the decision between you and the institution administrator, your account will either be released and you can consent to the statements again, or um, you would delete your account or the institution administrator would delete the account. We've also changed the footer so that now the legal, um, the legal link goes to this user privacy statement here that we are on so that um, people who are logged in can always see the state of the statements that they have accepted. Now, um, before we take a look at what happens when an institution privacy statement is updated, let's quickly take a look at um, deleting an account because that is now possible for everybody. Um, in the past, it was typically only possible when you, um, when registration was allowed for your institution and you had an internal account. But now it is possible to delete the account no matter the authentication method and the way um, in an account was registered or what the registration settings are for an institution. And so anybody can click the delete account button on their account settings page and uh, trigger either the deletion or the review of the deletion. In the beginning, you might remember that we um, switched the box to review account deletion so that an institution has the possibility to make sure that it does have all the portfolios that it might need to keep of a particular student before the student deletes their account. And so when I now trigger the account deletion button, I need to provide a reason for my institution why I want to delete my account and send the request. That request is being sent to the institution administrators. And if an institution doesn't have an administrator, it goes to the site administrators. On my account settings page, when I refresh that or come from it some other time again, I can see whether the account deletion is still pending and what the date of the pending um, deletion is. And if I think that I should be receiving an email from the institution administrator but haven't, haven't received one yet, I can resend the deletion notification and therefore remind them again. Or if I decide not to delete my account, I can also cancel the request. And either of those things are also being sent to the institution administrator so they know whether um, it needs to be deleted or not. But let's trigger the deletion again so I can show you what it looks like on the administration side. Okay, now going back to the site. And at this point, I can log in as institution administrator if I like. By the site administrator, I can also change institution privacy statements and terms and conditions and also um, deal with pending deletions. So I'll just stay logged in as site admin. So similar to pending registrations, 
you can now see pending deletions in the institution settings. And we were, I think, in the university, had a university user, and can see that a deletion is pending, see the reason, and then can approve it or deny it. When you approve a deletion, the account will be deleted immediately um, and everything will be gone. If you deny it, this you um, would then need to talk with the student why you deny it and you can also immediately provide a reason here um, when you deny it. Um, denial, um, and then the students can continue either with the portfolio or you can engage with them in a further discussion around the deletion. So now let's take a look what happens when um, you make a change to your institution privacy statement and issue a new version. Just make some changes in here. And as we've seen before, the version is added to the version table so that you can quickly see when things have been changed and also who made the change, who are the administrators. And really keep it transparent of when um, these important statements have been changed. Now, if I go back to my, st be my student, I can see that my institution privacy statement is the only one that is displayed, indicating that the other ones are still accepted. So they are still on yes and saying when you agree to them. But the one that has had changes, I need to consent to a new before I can enter my account. And if I do want to lock them up again in my account settings, I can see that um, I consented to the site privacy statement at 3.33, but then the institution privacy statement at 3.40. Therefore, it is really nicely tracked um, when agreements have been made. Becoming an administrator again, um, you can also see a report on the privacy statement and terms and conditions acceptance because it is important in some cases to kind of report on that for an institution and make sure that everybody using the site has agreed or if you need to um, yeah, just keep statistics and download that information and when um, statements were accepted or when they have been refused, you can take a look directly in the report. And in order to see that, you can go into the reporting section of Mahara and click the configure report button. Let's just choose our university and the report type user agreements. And on the right hand side, you can see what this report reports over, namely that you can see site privacy statement and um, whether that was reviewed or not. Oops, sorry. And you can also choose the columns. So in this case, we have some default columns, namely first name, last name, site privacy statement, and institution privacy statement. And um, the others I can also display, namely um, they would show me the dates. So if I'm only interested in seeing which statements this particular user has accepted, I can go with the default 
configuration of the report because here I see that um, my user accepted site privacy statement 1.1, site terms and conditions 1.0.1, institution privacy statement 1.1, and the institution terms and conditions 1.0. If I also wanted to show a date for these, then I can add a date when it was reviewed. And I can show the date for each of the individual statements and then also download that report. Since so far only one of my um, learners in the institution has accepted it, I only see that one instead of uh, the rest there. And this was a quick overview of the privacy changes that are coming in Mahara 1804 in April 2018. There are a few more intricacies that will be detailed in the user manual and uh, that you can explore, but these were kind of the, this was the big overview so that you know um, that you can turn on strict privacy in Mahara and trigger that everybody who has an account or will have an account on the site agrees to the privacy statement and the terms and conditions that are set out for the uh, user account and that it is transparent of when they were last updated, um, when learners consented to them and also allow institution administrators and site administrators to track that information in a report. It is now still the responsibility of each institution to make sure that the text in the terms and conditions and privacy statements matches what they are required to provide in there and therefore have proper content in them. If you have any questions, um, you can jump onto the support forums on mahara.org uh, mahara and ask your question there. Or once you have installed this new version of Mahara, for, um, which will be, for which we will be releasing a release candidate shortly, then you can try out um, all the things that I showed you today in order to wrap your head around them and um, prepare for the upgrade. Please note that the GDPR goes into effect on the 25th of May 2018 and that if your institution needs to comply with it you would need to have made changes before then. So together with your lawyer you would be able to map out a plan of what you need to change, um, what needs to change on your terms and conditions and privacy statement and um, all the things associated with it in order to be prepared for this EU regulation going into effect then. Thank you.